Hello, my name is Kevin Mumford and I'm an instructor at Esri. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about making the transition from ArcMap to ArcGIS Pro. If you haven't made the transition yet and you're thinking about it but really haven't had a chance to look at ArcGIS Pro too much, this is going to be a really great video for you. Let's go ahead and get started looking at the software. When I start the software, I land on the start page. Here on the start page, I can choose to either open an existing project or I can open up a new project. If I'm opening an existing project, I can choose from one of my more recent ones or perhaps browse to one not on the list. I can also choose to start a new project using one of the four provided templates. Today, let's start a new project using one of our provided templates. I'll choose the map template. It's going to ask me for a project name, and it's going to ask me for a location on disk to store the project elements. I'll go with all the defaults here. When the project opens, you're going to see some things that look new, and you're going to see some things that look a lot like ArcMap. Notice on the left we have a contents window. On the right we have a catalog window. These, of course, are an awful lot like ArcMap. The key difference here is the naming. These are now called panes, the catalog pane and the contents pane. In between the contents pane and the catalog pane is our view space. Right now we have one active view. This is our map view. Now let's look towards the top of the ArcGIS Pro application where we see significant differences in the application organization between ArcMap and ArcGIS Pro. For ArcGIS Pro, we see a switch from managing tools across a large collection of toolbars to the convenience of a tab ribbon allowing for easy access to tools and functionality. Tabs across the top of the ribbon break the ribbon into larger functional areas. And then within the ribbon, we see the tools organized into groups of similar functionality. Let's take a look at the Map tab. Notice we have a navigation group for navigating the map. We have a layer group for working with map layers. We have a selection group for selecting features and so forth. On the analysis tab, we see groups dedicated to tools and workflows for performing analysis. On the editing tab, there's groups for managing your edits, setting your snapping, create and modify features. There's even a gallery dedicated to quick access to all of our editing tools. Next, let's take a look at the final concept, context sensitivity, and how that affects tool availability and workflows. You might have noticed throughout my presentation that most of the tools on the ribbon are active, but some are grayed out. This is an example of context sensitivity. Let me show you what I mean. If I close my map view, almost all of my tools turn gray. When I reopen it, they're active again. This is because they're context sensitive to my map view. With that open and active, I now have the tools associated with my map view. Let's look at another example. When I activate the World Hillshade layer in my table of contents, notice I get a brand new contextual tab called Appearance. If I click on the Appearance tab, now I see I have several groups full of tools and functionality related to just this one specific map layer. Let's put this all together with a quick demonstration illustrating all three concepts working together. For this, I'm going to change to a different project. I'm going to choose the New York project. Notice the application is telling me I'm working with the New York project. Also notice my ribbon is primarily all grayed out. Let's go to the catalog pane, expand my maps folder. Notice I have four different maps. I'll double click the subways map to open that up. And finally, I want to symbolize my subway lines. First, I'll activate the layer name. Go to my ribbon and notice I have three new contextual tabs, appearance, labeling, and data. On the appearance tab, I'm going to navigate to the drawing group, to the symbology menu, and choose unique values. I'll set my field to the line field. I'll update my color scheme to something a little bit more bold. And finally, I'll increase my line width. And there you have it, the project environment, application organization, and context sensitivity. Armed with the working knowledge of these three concepts, you should be well on your way towards your migration from ArcMap to ArcGIS Pro. Thanks for your time. Enjoy the software. Thank you.